Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we return to the Psycheana lessons. This is lesson 10. Each of these lessons can be listened to independently. This is a course of lessons on what Dr. Frank B. Robinson termed the God Law. He had a certain unique way of writing. He was the mail order prophet and created these lessons in reaching and accessing your God power in a set of lessons that were sent by mail. And each one sort of builds on itself. I'm not sure we're going to go through all 20 lessons. I may do an episode where I combine the final 10 lessons if it's not as popular. Some people really like it. These lessons are really good and they teach you a way of accessing law. There's some exercises at the beginning that have been very helpful and I've gotten some great comments and letters about these lessons and each one sort of unveils the law in a sort of unique way. But a lot of times I can't put it into words the way the lesson is. It's a sort of internal teaching, a commanding sort of way of writing that I think is awakening from within as you read it. Advanced course number one, lesson 10. Dear friend and student, I take pleasure in handing to you now lesson number 10. This lesson is one of the most profound lessons of the entire course of instruction, and you will do well to follow it very closely. Also, please remember the more time you spend alone with these lessons, and the more time you give to your exercises, the better it will be for you. Remember also that if there is any limit to the power of the great God law, then I have not been able to find it. Keep quiet at all times. If you keep quiet enough, the God law will have an opportunity to work through you and to manifest to you something of its presence and power. Be sure and comprehend the part of this lesson dealing with your thoughts, for it is quite possible that you will have a different idea of thoughts before you finish these studies. Remember this, the law works whenever and wherever the conditions are complied with. This law is God, and it has to work because God is true. Sincerely, your friend and teacher, Frank B. Robinson. In this lesson one, I'm going to go over the ground covered by us to date in our studies together, and then I shall show you the principle involved and show you something of the way the God law works in the human life. I want you to pay very special attention to this lesson, for you must grasp it. You must know how to put this infinite God law to work in your own individual life. That is what you want. And that is what I want for you. Generalities are fine. Interesting reading matter is fine. Theories are fine. Many of them are true. But unless you understand the theory and put it to work in your own life, thereby making a fact out of a theory, then your studies will not be as valuable as they otherwise would be. The law exists and by this time you know it. You must know it. Now, what we want to do is put to work in your own life. And I'm speaking here to every individual student I have all over the world. It makes not so much difference where you are, nor does it make so much difference just what you do. For the universal God law is more than sufficient for every and all circumstances, and it operates with unerring precision, whether in Shanghai or in Timbuktu. It also operates equally as efficient in a black man as it does in a white or yellow man. Just as long as a person is a sane and normal human being, then the God law will work and it will never fail. So you will be very foolish if you do not perfectly understand its operation. And not only that, if you do not avail yourself of these marvelous operations, this mighty law operates in a spiritual realm. It is a spiritual law. Therefore, you must not expect to see the law work. You will see the results of its workings, but you will never see it work. Nor can you explain by means of the five senses just how it worked. Nor can you understand perhaps the principle involved in its working. But these things you do not need to understand. All you need to know is that the law actually does work and works here and now. That will be sufficient for you to know, for I doubt very much whether or not you care very much how this mighty God law works. Just as long as you know that it does work, you do not understand how or why electricity gives light. You cannot see electricity. You can never see electricity. 
you never will see it. You see its effects, nor do you. When you need the electric light stand at the switch and start to try and figure out just how and why the electricity contained in a bulb and through a wire can and does give light, you are not interested in the whys and the hows at all. You are only interested in getting the light. So it is in this invisible spiritual realm. You need the spiritual light, and if you are wise, you will throw the spiritual switch, and the light will come, in much the same way that it does when you throw the electric switch in your home. If you throw the switch and the electric light in your homes does not light, then immediately say why the power is off. And you probably would be correct. But in the dynamic unseen realm of the God law, there is no such thing as the power being off. The switch may get out of order, or you may fail to throw it fully on. But once the switch is fully thrown, the power never is off. It always is on. You will see here that the wise man will throw the switch into the spiritual realm and will leave it thrown. He will never need to pull it because this spiritual power costs nothing. No power company sends a bill around at the end of the month and insists that you pay it. Not at all. For the great master life spirit is and is as free as the very air you breathe. So throw the switch, leave it in, and then through the power of the spiritual realm and the God law, go out and do what you want to do in and through this mighty God law. For it is a mighty law. Shall we look at the law for a moment just to see how mighty it is? In passing, however, let me remind you that you must not try to understand this law now. For later, you will see that it is none of the five senses that can recognize this God law. It may be recognized, if necessary, through what may correctly be called a sixth sense. But I am not so much concerned here with the recognitions of the operations of this law, as I am with the facts of the material results following its operation. For instance, I place a few grains of barley in a barrel filled with earth. I also place the same number of grains in a barrel filled with iron fillings. In the course of time, the little grains I buried in the barrel containing the earth will begin to sprout. And the first thing you know, sticking their tiny heads through the soil, will be seen little barley shoots. Quite naturally, you say, yes, but try and explain it if you can. You cannot, as a matter of fact, and it is useless for you to try. But the God law was operating in that barrel and through those barley grains just the same. And all the scientists on earth can put their heads together and scheme and plot and plan and try, and they can never either explain those processes, nor can they duplicate them, for this is outside of their realm. And the man has not been born yet who can define spiritual law or its operations. We know the God law exists. We know its results are sure, but we cannot define its actions, nor can we understand what makes this law work as it does. So let us forget once and for all trying to comprehend the spiritual manner in which the God law brings into manifestation the things from the spiritual realm. We know it does just that. And to date, I have given you a little inkling of how it may be done. But I shall never attempt to tell you that I understand the marvelous spiritual processes by which it is done. For I would be lying to you if I did. And I try not to lie ever. Many people are amazed at the results I obtain in the field of spiritual healing. They absolutely cannot understand it. They see these things done, and they know, according to accepted rules, that they should not be done. But they are done. For in many, many cases in which the physician is stopped, I received a wire, and they throw the mighty power of the God law into play, and the result oftentimes makes people sit up and think. Time and time again, I'm asked by both physicians and ministers, how do you do it? Just what is the power you use? Have you any special gift that enables you to do these unusual things? And to all those questionings, I reply that I do not know how these things are done. An article recently appeared in a national magazine written by me and dealing with this very thing. In that article, I told my readers that I could not explain the processes by which these remarkable cures, etc., were accomplished. And I repeat the statements here. I know that when this mighty law is used, it is absolutely all-powerful. But I cannot tell you just exactly how a germ such as the streptococcus is made to leave the throat of an afflicted child, nor am I interested too much in that angle of it. When people wire me in an emergency, all I am interested in is the recovery of that ill one. I don't sit down and try to figure out how the God law can do it, but I do throw it into play 
whatever little knowledge of God that I have, and the result is usually all that is to be desired. I don't lose very many cases, and here it may be well also to tell you that the God law works far more effectively than you do not try to understand how it works. That's rather strange to some, but not to me, for I always remember that it, this is a spiritual law we are dealing with and therefore operating in a spiritual realm. We might better employ our time otherwise than in trying to find out how and why it works. So in the case of the grains of barley, surely neither the iron filings nor the earth in these two barrels are at all conscious that grains of barley have been placed in them. No one would say that. Neither can one say that the grains of barley know themselves that they are placed in the barrels. The one to sprout, the other not to sprout. The grains are all about the same, and it would be the rankest kind of folly to say for one moment that these little barley grains or the earth or the iron filings even know anything at all, yet one grows and the other does not grow. But the answer cannot lie in the intelligence of either the grains of barley, the earth, nor yet the iron filings. I think you will see, but these grains do grow, and they reproduce their kind also. Those in the filings will not do this. The answer to this problem lies in the fact that the great spiritual God law I am teaching you about is operating in the case of the barley grains in the barrel of earth. It cannot operate in the barley containing the barley grains mixed with the iron filings. You ask me why it cannot operate in that particular barrel. You will receive your answer in a future lesson and I shall not anticipate here. The grains of barley in the barrel contain the iron filings do not grow because the spiritual God law is not being complied with. This answer will do for the present time. We know that when the grains are transferred to another barrel containing good earth, they will grow. They are now in a position in which the God law can operate because the conditions governing that law have been complied with. So it is in your own life. Whenever the conditions in governing the God law are complied with, the results are very sure. When they are not complied with, nothing but failure and disaster can ever manifest. Either that, or a very mediocre existence is lived, in which joy and happiness and health do not manifest themselves in a very marked manner. The law is not being complied with, and failure and disease and unhappiness result. So if there are those among any students who have been bothering their heads trying to understand just why God permits this and why God permits that, then to such let me say that God has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with these things. The God law is not being complied with, and these unwanted things happen. But don't blame the God law for that. Don't blame it for something that happens through non-compliance with that mighty law, for the law is not concerned with anything in opposition to it. It is very vitally concerned with everything concerned when these things are being done through the God law itself. But it is not concerned about what happens in violation of the God law. Remember that and put it down right here. And now that if there is manifesting in your life, things are not so good and things you don't like any too well, put it down that your life is not being lived under conditions which the God law can operate. Where the God law operates, there can be none of those unwanted things. You however, are studying with me to try and find out how to put the God law into operation in your own individual life. You want to know how to individualize the God law so that you can obtain the many benefits it can and does bring to every human soul complying with law. And that is the object of this lesson, to show you just that. Always remembering, of course, that we shall not try to understand the methods the God law uses to manifest these things. You may string piano wires zigzag across a dark room if you want to, then place in that room a bat, a blind bat, and that bat will fly around in the room and never hit a piano wire. How? Well, you don't know and neither do I. But here we see again the subtle unseen God law, and we see it in actual operation for it guides that bat between those piano wires and it does with unerring accuracy. You may place a female moth in an empty capsule, Seal the capsule inside another capsule, then seal that capsule inside of yet another capsule, and do that six times, making sure no smell of any sort can escape from the innermost of those six capsules. Now you may introduce a male moth into that room, and the first thing the male moth will do is try and get inside those capsules. Why? Well, you don't know, and neither do I. But I do know that here again we see the God law in actual operation. 
You see what I mean? In my home, I have in the parlor a beautiful glass goldfish bowl. And in that bowl are three wonderful goldfish. At the same time every night, I feed those goldfish at the same hour. I change the water and wash the bowl out. When I enter that room every night to feed those fish, there is quite a commotion in that bowl and these three fish swim towards me and express their knowledge that I am there to feed them. Why? You don't know and neither do I, but I do know that the mighty God Law tells those fish that it is feeding time. You would not attempt to tell me that just for some force of habit those fish know that it is feeding time. If you do, then I shall ask you, how do they know it? Here again, we have but another manifestation of the subtle manner in which whenever and wherever there is life, the spirit of life is there in sufficient power to provide for that life, whatever is necessary for that life. Think that over a little bit. Whenever and wherever there is a human life, there's also the God law. For this God law created this human life in the first place, and it cannot be that after that creation, and I am that individual creation. The God law disappeared to be seen and heard from no more. Not at all. Now we have seen that your thoughts directed into what we may call the ether are met by and perhaps go out upon or into these millions and billions of cosmic rays. We know that a thought is the most powerful weapon which can be used to bring the God law into play. We have seen that a thought is a very vital part of this mighty God law. We have seen the thoughts to put this God law into operation must be directed into and charged with the one supreme thing in life most needed. Every negative thought must put a thousand miles into the nowhere. Under no circumstance must a failure thought or a negative thought of any kind ever be allowed to enter your head. If they are allowed to enter, then your work is undone for it takes twice as many positive thoughts to put out these fear thoughts. So don't entertain them. I just might as well say to you here that if you do entertain them, you will lose. Someone about here is going to write to me and tell me they can't help these fear thoughts or these negative and destructive thoughts from coming into their heads. Well, if there's such a person in existence, then I feel very sorry for him or her. For when a person gets to the place where he tells me he can't help these thoughts from coming, then I say to such a one, what a pity. Where did you lose your manhood or your womanhood? Yes, it's a thrice a pity, for even a baby knows its own mind. And yet full-grown men and women come to me and write to me and tell me they can't control their own thoughts. What a pity, I say again. For when one gets to a place in which he is not absolute master of his own thoughts, then I honestly feel sorry for him. For a thought is certainly the one thing above all others that can be mastered. It can be directed. It can be made to bring results from the spiritual realm, and it will bring them when you are in earnest enough to see that your thoughts are what they should be. There is no room in this world for the man or woman who cannot absolutely control his or her own thoughts. For that simply means that such a person cannot control him or herself. For the man or the woman is but the thought crystallized. And if one cannot direct his own thoughts or choose which thoughts he wants to entertain, then I am doubly sorry for such a person. Life's choicest blessings are for the man or the woman who is absolute master of his or her own thoughts and who in the thought realm decides to be whatever he or she wants to be. For such a one by this attitude is throwing into play the spiritual God law and sooner will the heavens fall than such a one be disappointed for the power behind it all, the God law behind it all, has ordained that the law governing its own operation is a law of absolute confidence. First, confidence in the law itself. Second, confidence in oneself to use the law. Third, confidence in one's fellow men and women that will bring the law into play, that will make you an overwhelming victor in life and don't you forget it, brother or sister, for I know of no more dynamic way to get the results than to show the mightiest intelligent God law that you have utter confidence in its existence and also in its power to do for you here and now. Jesus said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed and how well he knew what he was talking about, faith, there isn't very much of it on this earth, my friend. There is very little in one's fellow men, let alone in God, and yet faith and lots of it is one of the necessary conditions necessary to the operation of the God law. In fact, it is the law itself. 
Let me try to make that statement a little plainer, if I may. The law is that faith in the law brings the result or the answer to one's desires. Now, let me illustrate, and this information is firsthand for it happened to me, and therefore I can speak with absolute certainty some time ago. And when this business of mine was in its infancy, there came a time when I did not know just what the future would be. I had no publishing experience whatsoever, and never before I had written anything for publication. Here I was practically a greenhorn, one might say, and with an entirely new business on my hands, and running in opposition to long-established and wealthy concerns. I had practically nothing. I had one thing, though. I had an unshakable faith in the God law, and that means in reality I had everything. Now, there came this time I speak of. Magazines were wiring me, calling me from New York and Chicago on the telephone and begging me to give them a page ad for the next issue. For the success of Psychiana went through news agencies and advertising agencies at a very rapid rate, and I was besieged with requests for these full-page ads I run. Now bear in mind, please, that full-page ads in national magazines cost money, and some of them cost lots of it. I had practically nothing at that time, and furthermore, had I no confidence in the God law, you would not be reading this. Lesson now, for I should have been swallowed up in a very short order, as many have since that time who sought to imitate my methods and this teaching. They found that it could not be done, so they ran a couple of ads and then shut up shop. Here I was, though, not knowing for certainty whether I should make the grade or not. A few fellows had trusted me with a few hundred dollars, and these boys could afford ill to lose it. I didn't want them to lose it either, but I knew that if I had discovered some little of the actual truths of the real God, these teachings would go like wildfire. Today, two years later, I am sending my literature into 73 different countries. But as far as actual knowledge was concerned outside of my faith and in the God law, I had no assurance that even my full page announcement would bring one single reply. But I knew that the world needed my teachings. I knew they were true. And I also knew that if my theory of the philosophy of life and God was correct, the God law would be behind me 1,000%. So with a quiet, smiling trust, I went ahead. One corporation wired me, and I inserted ads to the tune of about $2,000. Then the next day, another one wired me, this one costing $1,450. I ordered that ad in also. Then, on top of all that, I ran the circulation up to many millions without even having the slightest idea where the money was coming from to pay for these ads. And the funniest part of it all was that I had not the slightest doubt of the God law that the money would come from somewhere. Not for one instant did doubt of God ever enter my mind, so I did the thing that was needed to be done and ordered the ads. Not many men would have done that, but I knew that I had confidence in the God law. And I knew further that this confidence was the very thing which made the law operate. I knew that. And so never giving the bills a second thought, and with a sweet smiling confidence in the mighty ever-present unseen spiritual God law, I went about my daily business. And then when the time came to pay the bills, they were paid. If I were to tell you in the way in which the God law worked in this case, you would have some time crediting your ears, for it was little short of uncanny, and I don't mean perhaps either, but the money came, the bills were discounted, and this thing is daily growing by leaps and bounds, as all over the world men and women are finding that God lives as the most subtle and visible force in existence today. And don't you forget it, brother and sister. Now listen to me some more. It is utterly impossible for you to rely absolutely on the God law for anything without receiving it. You can try a thousand different ways to get what you want without operation of the God law but you cannot put it into operation without your desires or prayers being answered. What do you think of that? And now let me tell you something else. When once you demonstrate even the tiniest little bit, this mighty spiritual power, it will become second nature to you to use it. You will never for one instant act outside of its realm, for you will know what to live apart from the God law would be very foolish. And let me say to you, this also, there comes a sense of power to the man who relies upon the existence of the God law in his life. That man gets somewhere, and all the world knows that he is going somewhere too, for he is linked up to the greatest power this world has ever known. It is the very same power that took the two little germ cells I spoke about and made you out of them 
It is the very same subtle power that gives the bat the guidance to miss the piano wires. And it is also the very same intelligence that tells the male moth that a female moth is hidden inside six sealed capsules. That is the sort of a power it is. And it would be vain to try to tell me that such an intelligence could not and cannot guide every moment of your life, every action of that life of yours, so that the very things you desire can come to you. It can, it will, it does. And the funny part of it all is that you will not be conscious of the fact that the God law is at work for your benefit until the thing you want begins to shape itself up. Remember this, please. Remember that this mighty God law is invisible. Remember also that it only operates in an invisible spiritual realm, therefore you cannot see its operations. But you may know with absolute confidence that it is working in your behalf, just as long as you are impressing on that God law through your thought realm the things you desire. Therefore, how manifestly foolish it would be for one to say that just because he did not understand the God law and just because he did not see it in operation, it was not working. That would be sheer nonsense. And the man or woman adopting that attitude never will receive anything from this invisible law, this invisible God. He cannot. The law is not being complied with. This law is here for the very purpose and for no other purpose than to provide every right thing the human heart can need. It is a law of God that all such things shall be and he has provided, if you please, a never failing law which operates to that end and the law has never failed yet. The conditions fulfilling the law or rather governing the law are very simple, but until they are grasped, those soaked in orthodox theology cannot see it. But that does not alter the fact of the existence of this mighty dynamic God law. Denying the law of gravitation does not nullify that law. It still works. Denying the law of electricity does not nullify that law. It still works. Denying the existence of this God law does not nullify that law. It still works. Those who deny its existence only stop the power from coming into their own lives. And again, where denying the existence of this God law stops automatically the power from operating in the life of the one denying the law, acknowledgement of the law is the very first step towards putting these staggering God powers into play in your own life first. Recognize the existence of the law. Then believe it. Then test it out for yourself and see whether or not it works. You turn on the electric light, never questioning. What is the result? Why the room is flooded with light. You trust in the God law and what is the result? Why the life is flooded with this unseen spiritual God power. You automatically depend upon it and it never fails. I wonder if you can do that. Do you think you can? Let me illustrate. Not so long ago, a banker in the East wrote to me telling me that two of his banks were in distress. This good friend didn't know which way to turn. He knew of the existence of the God law for he has followed me in everything I have written to date. But in this crisis of having two banks on the verge of failure, he weakened a little bit. Not much, but he did weaken a little. In the very moment he should have been the strongest, he slipped a little. He was not sure of the proper move to make. And, as was quite natural, he made the wrong move. It did no harm in this case, for I should have said that he contemplated the wrong move. He got in touch with me, though, and got straightened out, and neither bank closed its doors. From a totally unexpected angle came the relief. He complied with the God law and the answer was sure. The bank was saved. But the result was through an operation of the God law and through the constant realization on the part of this banker that such a law existed and was sure. In rather a miraculous manner, a certain way opened up and lo and behold, instead of bemoaning the threatened failure of this man's two banks, he saw the foolishness of such worrying and let the intelligence of God guide. And it did. And as always, the man is more successful today than he ever was. And as usual, there is no doubt now in that man's mind as to whether or not it is better to trust the God law, even though darkness, than it is to go ahead under one's own steam. A letter came today, noon, from a man who owns a hotel worth $40,000. They took the hotel away from him last week on a mortgage of about 6000 and this man writes me, what can I do? I haven't answered the letter yet, but do you know what I'm going to tell that man? I'm going to tell that man to direct his thoughts and desires continually into the God realm and leave them there. 
I shall tell that man to be wide awake for the leadings which will inevitably come to him from the spiritual realm, through his own thought realm, and if he will do that, and I know he will, before the year's grace is up, he will have his hotel back and the mortgage will be paid, for he has one year in which to redeem it, and by the very simple plan of putting the God law into operation, by trusting it and telling it that is desired, the results will be sure. There is no mistake about this, for just that is the whole purpose of the God law. That is the reason it is here. That is the reason it was placed here millions of ages ago. Do you see that? For this God law is responsible for everything in existence, even you and me. There never was created a thing that did not first originate in the realm of this spiritual God law. And there can never arise a circumstance with this God law cannot change if a change is necessary, for this law is truth. It is justice, it is love, it is right, and greater than all, it is an ever-present providing God. And don't you forget it, if you do not use this mighty life spirit, that is your fault, not mine. I'm telling you of its existence and I am showing you as intelligently and as earnestly as I possibly can just how to use it. First recognize its presence. You know you are alive, so the God law must be there too. Second, recognize its power. Third. Put the power into play now and here and for whatever you need in life and to repeat sooner will the heavens fall than you be disappointed. The only thing that can possibly hinder is a wavering faith, so don't waver. Here is a student of mine working, shall we say, in a garage. He is a mechanic. He has nothing except his wages. He wants a nice home. He wants a good car. He wants to be happy. Now, in accordance to all the rules of the game, about the usual thing this student would say before beginning his studies with me, of course, would be something about like this, oh heck, I can't ever get any place. I can't ever save enough to buy a garage. It takes too much money to live these days. And the chances are that he never would get the garage he wanted. But you take that person and let him make up his mind that he wants that garage. Let him make up his mind that he really wants that home. And being in earnest, he follows my studies implicitly. We find his predominating thought continually on that garage. We find him doing the exercises I have prescribed. We find that man sending his desires or thoughts into the God realm every day and every night. We find that man having faith in the God law. And what happens? In the first place, that man, perhaps unknown to himself, is bringing into play the most dynamic spiritual law this world has ever seen. He is bringing into play the very force or spiritual power that caused this created scheme to be. And according to the God law, which by the way can never fail, the things this young man wants are already beginning to manifest somewhere. Somewhere, circumstances, and all unknown to this fellow, are shaping themselves so that this man can have his garage. What does it? Why the all-consuming and universal God law does it? For never was a man born outside of that law, never a circumstance yet outside of that law, never a desire expressed yet, really expressed, and the answer expected outside of that law. And these desires always win, they never fail. For don't you see, this great God law is all in all. It is the life spirit that exists everywhere. It is the intelligence that guides the geese over the snow-capped hills of Canada to sunny California. It is the motive power behind every man who wants to achieve or do something for himself. Get that, friend. That motive power is the God law. And this garage man, by directing his thoughts and desires to God, has already put into operation the law that can never fail. And the only thing that can possibly stop the material manifestation of that garage is for the young fellow to lose his faith and quit. Even then, sometimes these desired things manifest. The God law once started into action for you and me, always does what was impressed upon it. This is what the Galilean carpenter meant when he said, all things whatsoever ye desire, when ye pray, desire, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. That is the law of God. This is where the spiritual power lies. And from the time immemorial, this same power has been going to waste because men and women do not know of the law involved. They couldn't see it. So they never suspected that such a law existed. You can't see radio waves either. Up until a demonstration was made, men didn't believe they existed either. But just as surely as the radio waves exist, so does the God law exist. They listen to what 
the churches and superstitious religionists had to say about God, and they made up minds that the church God in the sky never could help them here and now. And they were correct, but the existence of this now known God law never has been suspected even by those who think they know the most about God today. What a pity. But as I say, as his teachings become known and as men and women begin to talk about and spread abroad the results our students are obtaining, it will not be very long until this power is universally known for what it is. Demonstration after demonstration will be made. Healing after healing will occur. Poverty will begin to wane. For men and women, for the first time in history, through my teachings, I humbly must state, are getting a tiny glimpse of the marvelous God law at their disposal. And no wonder they step on this mighty power and do things. And here I am going to leave w once more until next week. Then I shall perhaps tell you the story of how, in less than two years, through the operations of the God law, I changed absolutely failure and poverty into glorious success and plenty. For you will remember it is not two years yet since I lived in a rented apartment, had no money, no car, no life insurance, just a job and a wife and the baby. The God law, however, in less than two years changed all that. Now through using the God law, I own a beautiful home, one of the best in Moscow. I own a wonderful sedan, an extra lot next door to my home. I've had installed a beautiful pipe organ in that home. I've made thousands of dollars worth of life insurance and millions upon millions of people have seen my picture and hundreds of thousands have heard my voice over the radio. And the next lesson will tell you something about how I did that. And you will certainly be interested in hearing about it, for I don't think it has ever been duplicated by anyone. Changes have been made all right, but I don't think is radical a change in as short a time. And on top of all that, I have thousands of students all over the world who are using the same methods for the same results, and my files tell mighty interesting stories of their successes. Keep the thoughts of what you want directed into the spiritual God realm and keep at it. Realize that the chances are the thing you want is already on the way to you. Don't forget that and live in the constant expectation of its manifestation. For it is yours in the moment you can rely on this mighty God power to bring it. And remember, when the God conditions are complied with, the God law never fails. Examination questions for lesson number 10. These examination questions are for your benefit and you should know the answers to them. If they are not clear to you, read your lesson again and again until they are clear. 1. What is the subject of Lesson 10? 2. You must not expect to see the God Law work. Why not? What will you see? 3. Wherein does the God Law resemble the electric light? Wherein does it differ? 4. What is the illustration of the barrel and the grains of barley? The lesson conveyed thereby. 5. How may this lesson be applied to your own life? 6. What is the most powerful instrument by which to bring the God law into play? 7. The God law ordained that law governing its own operation is a law of absolute confidence. Confidence in what? 8. Faith in the God law brings the results desired. Dr. Robinson gives a striking example of this in the early history of Psychiana. 9. When may you know with absolute confidence that the God law is working in your behalf? 10. What is the first step towards putting the God law into play in your own life? 11. Three steps are required in all. 12. Jesus correctly expressed the God law in giving his directions for prayer. Can you quote the passage? So this particular lesson speaks to two big points in my mind, and that is don't get caught up in the how. I meet a lot of people that really want to understand how the God law is working, how reality is being changed. And they get so caught up in the how or the why, they don't let it happen. And so a big majority of this is to convince you it doesn't matter how it works. We don't know about electricity when we turn it on. We just assume it goes on. That is something he repeatedly says in here. We don't know about the bat, though we do now that it's sonar, but we still don't know how, and we don't know about the moth, he is giving these examples because a lot of people get caught up in that and it causes you to lose faith and belief in the God law. That's the one key thing. If you believe with confidence and confident expectation in the constant expectation of the manifestation, then it will come to you. 
So it requires faith and belief and letting go of the how and why. Forget about it. Forget about the how and why. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Do you need to know how the electricity works in your house? You don't. You just turn it on. Do you need to know how the internet works when you turn on your computer? You don't. Just turn it on. It is not important for you to know the hows and whys. Getting caught up in that is not important. You need to create the proper soil so that the seeds that you plant can grow and they will grow when they are in tune with the God law. Create the soil so that there's no iron filings. Plant your seed, let it grow with confidence and live in the constant expectation of its manifestation. So I'd love to know how it's been going so far. Some of these lessons can be generic and some can be specific. They all have seeds and plant seeds and unveil the God law in many ways. And the key to me in this is to live in constant expectation and to forget about the whys and hows of the operation of this law. You'll never understand it. It doesn't matter. So let me know how it's going so far on the Psycheana. And if you want me to continue individual lessons or to finish them all up in one lesson, in any case, all episodes of the reality revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. Welcome to the reality revolution.